George Johnson wrote a great piece in the science section of the New York Times uh, yesterday. And I think it's apropos to our political system today, to Donald Trump, to capitalism, to politics. It's fascinating stuff. So let me start out by explaining how... Uh, Milton Friedman and von Hayek and uh, or and von Mises and Friedrich Hayek and all all these kind of religious fundamental free market fundamentalists believe both economics and politics should be organized. There, it's a, it's an article of faith. It's really a belief system, and it goes something like this. In the in the days or weeks or months that it would take a uh, a legislative committee or a bureaucracy or a uh, a senator or whatever to figure out how things should be in the government or in the economy, millions of individuals have made hundreds of millions of instantaneous decisions by choosing what to buy and what not to buy that define. How things should go, and so the and, and and therefore, if everybody subscribes, this is Ayn Rand as well. This is uh, you know the, the this is basically the libertarian worldview. If every person, instead of supporting something like what the founders created, you know, a democracy and a republic, a democratic republic, a, a constitutionally limited representative democratic republic, instead of that. We simply had a marketplace, whether it's a marketplace for blue jeans or cars, or whether it's a marketplace for ideas, and whoever buys the most of those ideas, you know, the marketplace has its own intelligence. The marketplace will automatically come up with the best solution. This is the theology, the the religion of these guys. And over and over and over again, we've seen this tried... And it always produces bubbles and busts. It always produces a very small group of very rich people and a very large group of working poor. It always destroys economies. I mean, universally. And it destroys political systems. And there's a biological analogy to this. And this is back to this article by George Johnson in the New York Times yesterday. Cellular cheaters give rise to cancer is the title of the article. And he doesn't come right out and say, you know, is Donald Trump a cancer within our body politic? But he comes off a close. He starts out by talking about how back in 1871, Charles Darwin speculated that all life on Earth probably began in a warm pond with chemicals, you know, assembling themselves into uh, randomly and accidentally until they, they did so in a way that could replicate itself. And thus the first life was formed. And the early life was just in, it just interested in replicating itself. You know, the early viruses, for example, arguably not even a life form because they don't they don't consume or excrete; they simply reproduce. And then you get more complex life forms. You know, single cell life forms, bacteria, amoebas, things like that. But then, actually, I'm not sure if an amoeba is single cell or not. I think it is, but I, I could be wrong. It's been a long time since I took biology. But then we get to complex life forms, like you and me, with hundreds of billions or trillions of cells that have to interact with each other. The way that George Johnson says it, he says, is the primordial cells mutated and evolved, ruthlessly competing for nutrients, some stumbled upon a different course. They cooperated instead, instead of competing. Sharing resources and responsibility, and so giving rise to multicellular creatures, plants, animals, and eventually us. Each of these collectives, George Johnson writes, is held together by a delicate web of biological compromises. By surrendering some of its autonomy, each cell prospers with the whole. And then he gets to the nub of this issue, and and to where I'm going with this right now, asking this question, does Donald Trump... Uh, sort of like Silvio Berlusconi in cancer, I mean, in, in uh, Italy, uh, represent the cancer stage of politics. You've heard me talk before about the cancer stage of economics, the cancer stage of capitalism. But because the Supreme Court 
back in 1976 and then again in, in 2010 with Citizens United, has basically turned our political marketplace into a capitalist marketplace by saying that billionaires can basically buy any politician they want as much as they want. They can spend you know, the virtually unlimited amount of money to change the nature of elections and issues and debates. Are we now at the cancer stage? I'm not sure I'd call it the cancer stage of democracy. It's the cancer stage of a democratic republic corrupted by an economic cancer, by, 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 by the cancer stage of capitalism. So back to this article in the New York Times, he says, but inevitably there are cheaters. A cell breaks loose from the interlocking constraints and begins selfishly multiplying and expanding its territory, reverting to the free-for-all of Darwin's pond. And so cancer begins. And then he explains how this works and how cancer shows up in virtually every complex life form, fish, insects, plants, mammals, birds, reptiles, fungi. And then this incredible sentence... This is in a science story in the New York Times. No wonder cancer has become a metaphor for human excess, overpopulation and consumption, environmental pollution, the concentration of resources among a hyper-acquisitive 1%. So here you've got a science writer in the New York Times identifying the hyper-acquisitive 1% in America, the, the, the Donald Trumps of America, as cancer. I, you know, I, I, I thought it was just astonishing. And then you've got, I don't know if, you, I don't know if you've seen the article over at dailybeast.com. It's, it's actually all over. The Guardian has a piece about it, and, and the Huffington Post has a piece about it. But apparently Donald Trump's lawyer, according to the reporter over at Daily Beast, threatened the reporters who were writing this story about an old book that was written that, that alleged that Donald Trump uh, basically had non-consensual sex, shall we say, with Ivana, his wife, who has since repudiated that remark, and in fact this morning came out and endorsed the Donald. I don't think that the whole, you know, was Donald a rapist thing is even news. I mean, it's, it's, it's salacious. What's news is that his lawyer said to this young reporter that he was going to, you know, sue him for everything he has and destroy his life for the rest of his life. And, I mean, if you go over to dailybeast.com, you can read the whole thing. I'm not going to uh, read it all on the air. But, but it, it, it says to me that we're at the, you know, I mean, this is how, it's like slap suits. This is how corporations behave, right? If you, if you, you know, if activists go after a corporation, the corporation will sue them, knowing that the activists don't have a lot of resources, and just the threat of a lawsuit will shut them up. And now this is happening in our political discourse. When the top 1%, or the top 1 1,000th one of 1%, 1 Donald Trump, don't just influence politics, but become politics, does that mean that we have hit the cancer stage of a political process that has been corrupted by our Supreme Court with this Ideology of marketplaces always are the best. <laughs>